Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Rank, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the biggest number in a two-dimensional array. So we're going to do this by following a three-step process, and that process is going to be to first understand exactly what the problem is that we're trying to solve and how it's going to work. Secondly, we're going to uh, develop an algorithm to solve our problem, which is what? Finding the biggest number in a two-dimensional array. And then finally, we'll see an example of it will implement our solution, will implement our algorithm that we developed to find that number in that two-dimensional array by writing a C++ program using Visual Studio. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And you can see that I have a representation of a two-dimensional array, a three by four array that's just populated with some random numbers I picked. Okay, so the way this is gonna work is we're first going to need to start somewhere. Okay, so we'll begin by keeping track or we'll, we'll have a variable that's going to keep track of or we need to keep track of the biggest value that we've found in the array so far. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start off with eight, the very first value in the array. We, we got to start somewhere. We're going to start there. Okay, and then once we've you know, assigned or once we've started with eight and we're assuming that that's our biggest, then what we'll do is we'll take a look at that first number in the first row and we'll say, well, is that bigger than what's in the biggest? No, it's not. So then we'll move to the next number in that row, 16. Now is 16 bigger than what's in biggest? Why? Yes, it is. So we'll replace what was in biggest with 16, that eight was 16. That's our new biggest. And we're just going to keep going on. So we'll look at the seven. Is that bigger than what's in biggest? No. So let's move on to five. Is that bigger than what's in biggest? No. We've now found the biggest value in that first row. So let's move to the second row. Start with the first value there, three. Is that bigger than what's in biggest? No. So we'll move to the next value, zero. Is that bigger than what's in biggest? No. So we'll move to the next value, 19. Is that bigger than what's in biggest? Yes, it is. So we're going to replace the 16 in biggest with 19. Okay, so then we'll continue on. Take a look at the four. Is that bigger than what's in biggest? No. So we're done with that second row. Let's move to the third row. Start off with the first value, two. Is that bigger than what's in biggest? No. You know, you can see at this point, you know, that it, we're not going to find anything bigger than biggest, but what about the 11? This is how the algorithm is going to work. So let's finish it off. Is 11 bigger than biggest? Or no, 11 not bigger than 19. So what about 13? Bigger than biggest? Nope. What about six? Nope. So once we've gone through every value in each row, we're guaranteed with this approach to have the biggest value. Okay. So let's put that in terms of an algorithm. Okay. So what did we do first? We started off by assuming that the first number in the first row is the biggest. We had to start somewhere. Okay. Then what did we do? We looked at each number in the first row. And what did we do? If that number was bigger than biggest, what? That number became our new biggest. We replaced what was in biggest with that number. And then what? We just repeated that for every single row. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's not much more complicated than that. All right, guys, so let's go take a look at our implementation by using Visual Studio. Okay, so you can see that I've got a two-dimensional array that is already set up. Okay, so what we need to do then is we need to follow that algorithm. Okay, so what did that algorithm look like? Okay, so there it is. Assume the first number of the first row and we'll We'll keep that here, okay? So that way we can write the code out and have it there for reference, okay? So let's go ahead and write ourselves some code. So we have to assume that the first number in the first row is the biggest, right? So let's go ahead and create a variable called biggest and we'll assign to it the first number in the first row, okay? So then what did we have to do, right? We had 
um, an outer loop, right? We had this outer loop that um, had to go through each row. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll say, okay, well, for int r equals zero, that's going to be the first row. So long as that row is less than the number of rows, well, how many rows are there? There's three. Okay, then we're going to do something. Okay, so that is the basis of our outer loop. Okay, then what? We had to have an inner loop. Okay, so we got nested loops going on here. So that inner loop has got, um, you know, it's got the, uh, for each number in the row. Okay, so what we're doing is we're moving column by column. So we can do something like this for int c for column equals zero and c less than, well, how many values are in each column? How many values are in each row, right? How many columns are there in each row? There's four. Okay, so then we'll say c less than four, c plus plus. Okay, so then from there, what? What was in the inside of that inner loop? Well, what we had is we had, uh, you know, a test. If the number is bigger than biggest, right? If the number is, num is bigger than biggest, then what do we do? Okay, then biggest becomes that new number. Okay, well, what is that number? It's going to be whatever is in the rth row in the cth column. So what we're going to say is we're going to say nums r and then c. Okay, and then we'll do the same for right here. Okay, because what's going to happen? Okay, if we trace through this, then the... Um, R is going to start off at zero, right? And so then take a look at the loop. If R starts off at zero, is R less than three? Yeah, because it's set to zero. So then you enter the body of the outer for loop. And so then you set C equal to zero. Okay, now you say um, if nums R of C is greater than biggest, well, what's R and C? Zero, zero. So that's where you're doing your comparison of your first value to the second value, or excuse me, the first value to what's in biggest, right? So the eight against the eight, all right? So that's obviously gonna be false, so because eight's not bigger than eight, so this gets skipped, okay? Because keep in mind what's inside of biggest. Okay, biggest got initialized with num zero, zero, which is eight. Okay, so once that's done, then that inner loop is going to have another repetition. C is going to get incremented by one. So then C is going to become one. And so then you do the test expression again. Is nums R of C greater than biggest? Well, what's nums R of C? It's zero, one. So what's in the zero, one position? The zeroth row and the oneth column, 16. So that's true. So then biggest becomes num of RC, or nums of RC, excuse me. And that 16 is going to overwrite the 18, okay? And so then it's just going to continue on from there, um, just as we outlined in the, um, in the intro, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, run it just to make sure that we get it. And at the very end, we'll just uh, do a little C out here that says C out uh, biggest, okay? And then uh, we'll uh, see what we got. Okay, so there you go. You can see the 19 and everything works just as we had planned, just as we had hoped. Okay, so bada bing, bada boom nailed it all right so that's everything i got for you in this video i mean so what did we do we looked at how you can find the biggest value in a two-dimensional array how did we do it we first understood the problem what we were trying to do right and we, and we traced through how the algorithm was going to work and then we developed the algorithm wrote it out and then we simply implemented it converted that algorithm into c plus plus code okay so if you thought the video was useful please consider giving a thumbs up if you thought the video sucked, 
then you got that thumbs down as well. Please consider supporting the channel in various ways. Leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when new videos are being released. Consider joining as a member for additional perks for as little as 99 cents a month. Hit the super thanks, you know, whatever. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have any questions, feel free to email me, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom, okay? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.